Good morning, friends. At the outset, uh, my thanks to Dr. Bansi for inviting me for this uh, uh, talk in the Diacon. And uh, good morning, everybody. I'll be talking about uh, diabetes and bone. So we have been listening uh, about anti-diabetic agents, oral anti-diabetic agents, insulins uh, uh, throughout this one and a half days. And today I will shift the focus uh, slightly on uh, how diabetes uh, affects the bone and uh, how anti-diabetic agents, they affect the bone. So this would be the uh, two halves of my talk, which uh, I'll be discussing. So this is going to be the flow of my talk. I will start with the fracture uh, prevalence in uh, diabetic patient data, fracture affecting, factors affecting the fracture risk, uh, effect of BMD on diabetes, quality of bone in diabetics, and effect of diabetics on bone metabolism, effect of uh, anti-diabetic drugs on bone health, and fall risk in patients with diabetes. So quickly I will take you through this uh, presentation. So fracture prevalence in diabetes. So this was a publication in uh, BMJ and uh, diabetes mellitus and risk of fractures at specific sites. And uh, it was a meta-analysis and the conclusion of the meta-analysis was diabetes was associated with uh, total hip upper arm and ankle fracture risk. So the uh, relative risk was 1.32 for total, 1.77 for hip, 1.47 for upper arm and 1.24 for ankle fracture. So definitely there was uh, increased risk of fracture in diabetic population and type 1 diabetics had a higher risk than type 2 diabetic at uh, overall 1.24 fold. At hip it was 3.43 fold and at ankle it was 1.71 fold and there was no sex difference uh, found as far as the risk of fractures was concerned in diabetic uh, population. Now again uh, continuing with uh, type 1 diabetes, so type 1 diabetes and risk of fracture there was a meta-analysis and uh, this was meta-analysis of around 27,300 patients. And the meta-analysis revealed that the percentage of fracture events in type 1 diabetes was 7.6% com uh, compared with 3.1% with non-diabetic patients. So it was almost double. And type 1 diabetes is associated with a three-fold higher risk of uh, any fracture. So fact uh, factors affecting the fracture risk. So this is uh, uh, how uh, the uh, bone quality gets affected by bone mineral density depletion and risk of frequent falls which is seen in diabetic population and uh, bone mineral density across the lifespan in patients with type 1 diabetes and uh, you, the study showed that across the age groups the lumbar spine BMD was similar in patients with type 1 diabetics compared with age and sex match participants without diabetes except postmenopausal females with type 1 diabetes had lower lumbar spine, femoral neck, and total hip bone mineral density. So a subset of type 1 diabetic uh, population had lower BMD, that is postmenopausal type 1 diabetics. So this is another data of uh, bone mineral density predictors in long-standing type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So Female sex and long-standing diabetes resulted in low BMD in type 1 diabetes with special concern for femoral neck. So this I already discussed in the uh, previous slide. Type 1 diabetes is a risk factor, but long-standing diabetes is another risk factor. And for type 2 diabetes, there is an increase in BMI uh, partially contributing to BMD preservation and uh, independent of age. So there is... Uh, uh, some instance where increase in BMI can be protective. So for most of the vascular and metabolic complication, BMI increase might be detrimental, but not for fracture risk. In fact, it becomes protective. Now association between bone mineral density and type 1 diabetes, this is meta-analysis of uh, observational studies and it showed diabetic individuals had higher BMD levels than non-diabetics independent of skeletal site of measurement, gender, age, BMI or medication use. 
So what is the pathophysiology of uh, diabetes induced bone fragility? So I have been mentioning in the last two slides that the BMD may be actually slightly better in uh, obese type 2 diabetic population. So what are the risk factors for increased bone fragility then in a diabetic uh, patient? So diabetic conditions like hyperglycemia, oxidative stress, advanced glycation end products, homocysteine, decreased insulin action and decreased IGU F1 can increase the risk of bone fragility and uh, via this mechanisms, dysfunction of uh, osteoblast, dysfunction of osteocytes which leads to decreased bone formation and impaired bone remodeling and uh, impaired bone remodeling uh, can lead to uh, advanced glycation uh, cross links accumulation and abnormal microstructure. Uh, involving the trabecular heterogeneity and cortical porosity and uh, this leads to bone quality deterioration so though BMD may not be very low or it may be better than non-diabetic patients uh, the bone fragility is uh, actually high so this is the dysfunction of uh, osteoblast and osteocytes in uh, diabetics which I was mentioning previously so this is the mechanism underlying diabetes related bone fragility induced by advanced glycation end products. So this I already discussed, so I will skip this slide. And this is the effect of uh, diabetes on bone metabolism. So here is diabetes and here are various risk factors like hyperglycemia, hyperlipidemia, hyperinsulinemia, obesity, altered bone turnover markers and ultimately it leads to uh, fall, diminished bone healing, bone loss, increased marrow apogenesis, intramuscular apogenesis, increased BMD which might be protective in a way but uh, uh, other factors uh, leads to increase in the bone fragility, decreased bone formation and ultimately this culminates in increased fracture risk. So effect of diabetes on bone health, so uh, these are the pathophysiological mechanisms which are proposed and these are the effects on bones. So again I am not uh, repeating this slide. Now I will come to anti-diabetic drugs affecting the bone metabolism. So this is an overview of uh, anti-diabetic drug on bone health. So metformin, it is a sort of neutral uh, agent as far as the bone health is concerned. The glitazone, we all know uh, glitazone can reduce the bone mineral density and increase the risk of uh, fractures. Uh, the insulins, neutral, sulfonylureas, uh, it may increase the risk of uh, fractures, uh, but it is not due to uh, the effect on bone density, it might be due to increased risk of uh, you know, falls, maybe due to hypoglycemia. Incretins, again they are neutral and HGLT2 inhibitors. HGLT2 inhibitors can increase bone resorption and it may increase the risk of fracture in long run. So these are the effect of anti-diabetic drug on bone metabolism and fracture risk. So metformin, um, uh, I have already discussed uh, this, metformin promotes the differentiation of stromal cells into osteoblastic lineage and inhibits the apogenesis and metformin enhances the differentiation and mineralization on osteoblasts. So uh, metformin increases bone formation and decreases bone resorption resulting in a gain in bone mass. So definitely it is not increasing the risk of fracture but glitazone, yes glitazone decreases bone formation and increase the bone resorption. So double insult on the bone results in reduction in the bone mass. Sulfonylureas, this is a meta-analysis of 11 studies uh, which evaluated uh, around 2.5 lakh uh, patients uh, with type 2 diabetes treated with sulfonylurea and it was associated with a 14% increase in risk of fracture. In terms of bone metabolism, the function of sulfonylurea is still unsure. So it's mostly neutral, it doesn't affect uh, osteoblast or osteoclast. More recent evidence shows that uh, the risk of uh, hip fracture in treated patient is almost double, as I mentioned, likely because of higher hypoglycemic rates with the sulfonylurea, leading to more falls. AGIs, 2.89 million patient uh, 
meta-analysis, no significant risk were reported in patients taking AGIs. GLP-1-RA and DPP-4 inhibitors. So again, no significant clinical effect of GLP-1 receptor agonist and DPP-4 inhibitors was seen on skeletal tissue. SGLT-2 inhibitors, uh, studies show that dapagliflozin has neutral effect on bone uh, turnover and bone density. And in post hoc analysis of MPAREC study, uh, it was also neutral as far as uh, the fracture is was concerned and available data were limited regarding bone health and SGLT2 inhibitor. So more data is uh, needed to convincingly uh, say whether it's uh, uh, neutral as far as the fracture risk or not. Insulins and insulin-like growth factors. So I mentioned about increased risk of uh, fractures in postmenopausal type 1 diabetic uh, females and long-standing type 2 diabetics. Induced bone loss and bone quality deterioration is more important due to decreased bone formation and bone turnover resulting in an extremely high risk of fractures. So uh, 1.42 two-fold increase in fracture risk uh, relative to no insulin use. And in contrast, type 2 diabetics with insulin resistance may result uh, in bone quality deterioration without bone mass reduction due to deficiency in insulin activity in the bone. And IGF is known to have anabolic effect on bone and IGF-1 may be involved in diabetes induced bone fragility because IGF level is known to be decreased in patients with uncontrolled diabetes. Now this is the last part of my talk, fall risk in patients with diabetes and uh, the risk of fall is increased by diabetic microangiopathy such as neuropathy and retinopathy and micro, macrovascular disease and sarcopenia which we often seen in patients with uncontrolled long-standing diabetes which is a disorder characterized by degenerative loss of skeletal muscle mass, quality and strength and occurs more frequently in patients with diabetes than without diabetes. So to summarize my talk, the data shows a multifactorial chance of fractures in uh, diabetics, not uh, uh, essentially related to low BMD, but there are many other factors. Type 1 diabetic patients are more at risk for fractures than type 2 diabetes. Patients should screen for osteoporosis uh, in concern that diabetic patients uh, are at a higher risk of fracture. Adequate glycemic control prevents this risk and reduces the risk of micro and macrovascular complications. So it reduces the risk of falls also, which consequently can contribute to diminished production of uh, advanced glycation end products, reduce the vascular damage in bone tissue and lessen the risk of falls. Anti-diabetic drugs also affect bone metabolism. The glitazones, the most affected drug on bone and metformin have a preventive role in bone degeneration. The fracture can be indirectly occurring with sulfonylurea due to increased risk of fall due to hypoglycemia. More studies are needed to clarify a possible effect on bone health and safety profile among these medications, particularly the SGLT2 inhibitors. And in addition, falling increases the risk of fracture and vice versa. Therefore, developing a strategy for treatment of bone fragility through further studies and discussion is important. So thank you everybody for your kind attention.